Good morning. Last week, I'll be missing these sessions. I come here not to teach, I come here to share and revisit ideas about these films. So it's just a joy to be with you. This week's film is Drive My Car, a Japanese film from 2021, the winner of the Oscar for International Feature Film in 2022. It was re-released in 2022 following the international success. The film received other awards. Uh, it was considered for the Palme d'Or in Cannes, and in Cannes won three other awards, including Best Screenplay. And the director, who was one of the writers of the screenplay, and his friend O, oh, were the first Japanese to win uh, that award at the French Film Festival. It's a wonderful film. As usual, I've prepared a series of readings, reviews, frames from the film in the uh, week for in, in week 14, in the page for week 14, I've included PDFs with ample excerpts of the two stories by uh, uh, another Japanese writer, Murakami, uh, that are uh, inspire the film, uh, a short story entitled Drive My Car, although it is in many ways different from the film, another more beautiful story called Sherazad um, in the same collection that came out 2014, I believe, although the English translation was published only in 2017. Murakami just wrote another novel which either just came out or is about to come out in translation. So this morning I will tell you about the story and I'll, I'll present the story in a more linear fashion because the, the film, uh, which goes on for two hours and 40 minutes, introduces the elements of the story in many ways like a puzzle. You learn more and you understand more about the characters as you go. And in fact, even though it's two hours and 40 minutes, it doesn't feel that way. Even Manola Dargis from the New York Times defined the length of the film effortless, meaning you're not struggling uh, to get to the end of the film. Then I will present the theme, discuss briefly the themes of the film. And if there is enough time, I will show you at least one sequence from the film. Otherwise, I'll do that on Tuesday. So, Drive My Car is the story of Yusuke, who is a middle-aged Japanese theater actor whose peculiar approach to the production of classics from the global canon is multilingualism. At the beginning of the film, we see him on stage for the first time in a multilingual production of Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godot, where he is acting his lines in Japanese and the other actor is using some Indonesian language, for example, with super titles, uh, titles superimposed on the stage, meaning that on top of the stage, there is a large screen with translations of the line. This aspect is essential to the understanding of the centrality of the theme of communication. Communication between actors on the stage and people in the audience at the theater. Communication between the members of a couple, such as Yusuke and his wife, Otto. Communication with the dead. Meaning, after death, there is a lot that is untold and unresolved. And communication is not broken. You, you, you are still trying to connect and make sense of the relationship that was cut off. And this is true also in the character of Misaki, the actual driver of the title, Drive My Car. 
Yusuke, as I said, is married to Otto. They've been married for more than 20 years. However, they went through a crisis many years earlier, 15 or 18 years earlier, when they lost their daughter, who died when she was four. After that, they decided together not to have other children. However, Otto, who was herself an actress, a TV actress, went through a deep crisis and found her desire to go on, to move on in life through storytelling. And this is something that is presented in the first sequence of the film, but we learn that this is something that is a staple in the relationship between these two people, that when they have sex, sometimes, that in uh, quotation marks, strikes Otto, which is the inspiration for a new story. Right at the moment, uh, at the end of their uh, intercourse, she starts telling stories, stories that the main one is inspired by the uh, short story Sherazade, which, as I told you, is, is a gem of a short story, beautifully poetic. Mm. And the next morning, when they wake up during their day, the next day, they talk again about the story. Because she, the next morning, has forgotten a lot about the story, and he tell who he who has been listening, and of course, listening is part of communication, is part of the idea of the relationship with the dead, right? Was I listening? Or there was something untold because I wasn't able to to listen properly. The next day, he tells the story back to her. And those stories become the core of the productions that she does for TV. She, She stopped being an actor after the death of their daughter, but then the first time that inspiration struck during their lovemaking sessions, she developed the story into a screenplay. The screenplay was received an award at a contest, was produced for TV, and she became a TV writer and producer. So we find them at the beginning of the movie doing what they do. They make sex, they make love, and she tells the story of a high school girl who is in love with a boy from her school, cannot declare her love to him. She's paralyzed in front of him. And this is expressed a lot in the short story that inspired the film more than in the film. And what she does is, in order to experience her feelings for this boy, when he is at school and his parents are at work, She goes to his apartment. She enters the apartment with the help of a key that has been left by the family uh, under a pot. In in a small provincial town in Japan, everyone feels safe enough to leave a spare key near the entrance. And she finds this house very neat, very organized. She thinks that his mother, the mother of the boy, must be very controlling. And she inhabits this space as the space that is his own. She's breathing the same air, touching the same objects in his room. And at some point, she starts exchanging objects. She leaves a token of her love. In the short story, the first token will be a tampon, an unused tampon that she hides at the end of a drawer. And she takes small things, a pencil, other small items. And this goes on for a while. And of course, she thinks she might get found out. There is this also thrill and and scare. She thinks he might have a sense that someone is visiting and therefore possibly being in communication with her. At some point, though, the story is interrupted. Yusuke 
doesn't come to the point of hearing the ending of the story, which is still undeveloped. It's just that he knows that through the various sessions of lovemaking, eventually she will complete the story. But this doesn't happen. Otto dies. But dies in particular circumstances. Because one day, after Otto and Yusuke said goodbye to each other, and she gave him a tape, because he is driving an old Saab 900 from the 1990s with a cassette player. She gives him a tape with the lines of Uncle Vanya by Chekhov, because he's working on the production and acting as in the part of Vanya. She gives him this tape because he's going to Vladivostok in Russia, uh, Siberia, to uh, act as the judge at a theater festival. But when he gets to the airport, he learns that he, he'll have to take the, the flight the next day because of the weather in Vladivostok. So he drives back home, enters the house, and finds, sees his, his just moving into the house very quietly, and of course, hear sounds, noises of two people making love, and not even going into the next room by looking at a mirror from the entrance, you can see the reflection of his wife making love to this young TV actor, very loved by uh, young women, who's Takatsuki. Doesn't say anything, closes the door, takes the car again, drives back to the airport, takes a hotel near the airport to spend the night there, communicates with her that night, pretending to be Vladivostok, acting as if nothing had happened. Later on, when he comes back from Vladivostok, they do make love one more time. And he wants to have love with her, have sex with her on the same sofa where she had loved with Takatsuki. Takatsuki. And with the same sexual position. And something is broken between them. She continues the story, but the next day, he doesn't tell her the story back. He says, oh, I was almost asleep. I couldn't remember it. And she says, okay, maybe it wasn't worth remembering. But before she dies, one day she says, there is something I need to, t I need to talk to you. There is something I need to tell you. He pretends to have a workshop, leaves the house, spends the day driving, comes back late at night, afraid that this talk, this communication session, will be the end of their story. That their story was based on this equilibrium, this balance whereby he was pretending to ignore that she had affairs because we learned later on that whenever she was involved in, a, in the production of a TV uh, series or, or anything else, she would entertain affairs with one of the actors. So he wants to delay the moment when she will tell him, we cannot go on like that. That's what he's afraid of. However, he enters the house once again, as he did when he surprised his wife having sex with Takatsuki, the young actor, only to find her on the floor she had a brain hemorrhage, she never regains consciousness, dies. This is the first 40 minutes. And the film and the screenplay violate every single rule in Hollywood, yet it works. Because those rules often make for templated, formulaic, boring, predictable films. So everything is wrong, in including the fact that 40 minutes get by before you see the first the title of the film and, and, and the, the, first, the initial credits. The film itself, after that, takes place two years later. Yusuke, who's now a widow, widower, is driving to Hiroshima on his red Saab 900. He's going there to be the director for a production of Uncle Vanya by Chekhov. And gets there, they tell him there that they rented a house for him because he'll be there for eight weeks until Christmas, until the performance for the rehearsal, etc. 
they rented a house an hour away from Hiroshima because he requested that because he wants to be in the car in the morning, in the evening, going back and forth, because in the car he listens to the same tape that his wife Otto gave him with the lines of Chekhov. And this is the entire play by Chekhov minus the lines of Uncle Vanya. So there are just silent segments where the lines of Uncle Vanya should be, and Yusuke repeats the line, fills that void with the lines. So keep in mind, this is his dead wife talking to him. But it is also Chekhov talking to him because the character of Vanya, the more we know about Yusuke, the more we see that the middle-aged Yusuke with no prospects for big success or joy or love in life is a lot like Vanya. And the more he listens to that tape, the more we listen to the lines in the tape and the lines he says, the more we realize how much of just a position overlapping there is between life and theater, how much those lines from a drama written more than 100 years ago resonate with him. But they tell him that he cannot drive himself to his house and back to the theater. Um, for, and this is not just because he had an accident earlier on and they discovered that he has lost part of his eyesight, couldn't see a car coming because he has a glaucoma and therefore cannot see um, the see things on the side of him. But also because they said an artist uh, at this film, at this theater festival had an accident and the organization decided that they would hire a driver to avoid liabilities. And this driver is the young Misaki. Misaki is 23 or 24, the same age that the daughter of Yusuke and Otto would have been at that point. She's an orphan, very good at driving. She learned how to drive because her mother she was living just with her mother at the point in her life. Her mother worked in another city, and uh, they were living in the island of Hokkaido. And Misaki, even as a teenager, would have to drive her mother to the train station for an hour in the evening. And an hour back in the morning, the mother would leave at 7 p.m., come back at 5 a.m. And she would have to drive very carefully uh, on, on the roads of Hokkaido, which is, is the least, more, can be as a region, the least modern part of Japan, because otherwise her mother would kick her seat from the back where she was sleeping or beat her at home. So Misaki becomes the driver of Yusuke. They don't really have much of a relationship, right? Because while, Yusuke, while Misaki is driving the sub, Yusuke is listening to the tape of Uncle Vanya, waiting for the moments of silence when he will utter the lines of Uncle Vanya, and every trip they make is a different scene from Uncle Vanya. Then he goes to the performance theater, and there too he's rehearsing Uncle Vanya with the actors, and Takatsuki showed up to try for a part, the part of Astro, who's the young lover of Uncle Vanya, but he's given the part of Uncle Vanya, who's a much older man. So there is this tension, right? Because Yusuke knows that Takatsuki was his wife's lover. So the rehearsal goes on with various episodes. I'll just mention that one night, while Yusuke, Misaki, and Takatsuki are in the car, they are driving Takatsuki to his hotel, Takatsuki tells Yusuke the ending of the story of the high school girl who sneaked into his lover's, the boy she was in love with, apartment, leaving token of her love, taking stuff that uh, reminded her of 
And the ending of the story, the fact that this ending was communicated by the dead wife to the lover and not to the husband, of course, is conducive to a realization. The realization that he wasn't listening, that he withdrew from the storytelling when he intentionally omitted the details of the story after they made love the last time. So storytelling, sex, their relationship, they were all, uh, they were all connected very much and that was broken. That's the uh, realization. At the end of the rehearsal, right before, days before, they should go on stage, Takatsuki is arrested by the police because he has killed a boy younger than he is who was taking pictures because Takatsuki used to be a star, was involved in a scandal, had sex with a minor, but of course he's still a celebrity so people are taking pictures, whatever he is, at a bar outside of a hotel. So we don't see this happening. We just see Takatsuki chasing the boy, then coming back. But we learn later that he bit, bit him up in a park, and, and then he died. So he confesses to this crime. He's taken by the police at this point. They give Yusuke two options. Cancel the production, or he should be not just the director, but play the part of Uncle Vanya in the theater. Something that he doesn't want to do. Because at this point, especially after these two years of thinking about Vanya, at this point, the prospect is terrifying. At this point, the lines in Uncle Vanya are too close to him. They hurt him directly. So he says, give me time. And it takes a couple of days to come up with a decision and he tells Misaki, at this point, they have developed a more a closer relationship. Misaki told him how she left Hokkaido and came to Hiroshima after her small house was buried by a landslide. Her mother died. She took the car they had, which was the only <coughs> thing they had, drove to Hiroshima. At Hiroshima, the car broke down, and she stayed there driving garbage trucks and doing other jobs as a driver. So Yusuke tells Misaki to take this time to reflect that they should drive all the way to Hokkaido, which will take them almost two days, to see the place where her mother died, the place where her house used to be, which they do. And they have to drive through the night, through two nights, they have to take a ferry, they get to this place which is covered with snow, Hokkaido being in the northern part of Japan, and it's getting, of course, it's by, uh, by this point is, is December. <coughs> and they get there, they buy some flowers. Misaki will throw these flowers on the debris that is left of this house. And they, during this trip, they come to a self-realization, each one. Of that because Misaki is convinced she killed her mother and of course Yusuke feels responsible for Otto because he drove all day and if she had been home maybe she would have seen her faint because of the brain hemorrhage could have saved her right so his fear of communication was a factor in Otto's death, right? So Misaki will tell the story and explain the circumstances of her mother's death, how her mother was abusive, she was mentally unstable, had a split personality, she would, one personality would beat her up, the other was, the other personality was Sochi, a young girl of age eight, who would cry and let herself be consoled by Misaki. And when the landslide hit the house, Misaki was able to get out of the house, and she knew her mother was there, but she sat outside the house. 
not calling for help, not going back to retrieve her mother, feeling bad for the other personality of her mother, Sochi, not the personality of her mother who beat her up and was abused. Eventually, though, the rest of the mountain came on top of the house and her mother died. So Yusuke tells her, if I were your father, I would tell you it was not your fault. You were just a child. Right? Keep in mind the age, what I told you about, Misaki, and she, that she would have been the age of the daughter of Yusuke. Yusuke and Ota. And with the help of Misaki, Yusuke comes to the realization that maybe there is no great mystery about Otto and about the last communication that maybe Yusuke should accept that Otto loved him and that having affairs with other men during the TV productions didn't mean that she loved Yusuke any less. And this is what she was. Not that there is a need to reconcile her behavior in private with her behavior when she was with him. They drive back to Hiroshima, and the last sequence is Yusuke on stage acting Uncle Vanya, being physically drained by this performance when we see him backstage, but going on. And, and the last scene is beautiful. It's just him playing Uncle Vanya with Sonia, another key character in the play, played by a Korean deaf woman who's using Korean sign language for her last monologue, which is very touching, in complete silence. And in the theater, we see Misaki, of course, watching. There is a short epilogue after that. In the epilogue, we see Misaki driving the same red sub. And she is not in Japan anymore. She's in Korea. We see her in a supermarket during COVID. And uh, she is then driving on the road in the last scene with a dog in the car, smiling, finally, when she removes the mask she had in the supermarket. And there is a sm another sh small detail, because the, the last scene is without lines. She used to have a scar that was caused by the incident where her mother died. And she, she had said that to Yusuke that the scar could be removed surgically, but she didn't want to because she felt this connection with the dead mother. And now the scar is gone. So she's ready to embark on a new life. So the themes, briefly, before we watch a sequence, possibly the overlapping, as I said, between life, literature, or theater. I said literature because a lot is storytelling, right? Which is narrative and theater itself. The fact that it's not that theater imitates life or vice versa, but rather the fact that for someone as introverted as Yuzuki, the only way to channel his emotions is through theater. He cannot put words to what he feels or to uh, his relationship with his wife, not even when she was alive, but when he acts out those lines, then those lines become the channel for his own core feelings and emotions, right? And, and therefore, it's a very intellectual film, but very emotional at the same time if you immerse yourself in the story. So it's all about communication, as I said. The very fact that Yusuke's production are multilingual, and no one not even the actors can understand themselves, right? Because one actor is speaking Japanese, the other Chinese, the other Filipino, a Filipino dialect, etc. And uh, add to this even sign language. So, and, and someone who's from Korea, therefore, using Korean sign language, which is different from Japanese sign language, so leaving this kind of isolation. And communication difficult communication with the dead. And the dead brings up the issue of, was I listening? Had I been listening? What might have happened? And of course, death leaves a lot of untold story. The untold ending to the story of the girl in love with a boy. And again, it's a story about a, a high school girl who's unable to communicate her love to 
this boy she's desperately in love with. The car plays a big part. Of course, this car, which has been kept in pristine condition, you see this car that is, that is uh, 20 or more years old, and it's perfect. It's like a museum car. But it represents how Yusuke preserved his past. And of course, the car is a symbol of his relationship. And the card is where he listens to the tape where his wife, Otto, was reading the lines of Chekhov to him, right? So questioning him. And the card, as we found in other films, uh, is a kind of intermediate space. It's more private, can be more private than the house itself, right? He can be, Yusuke can be in the card without Otto with Otto, or it can be more public, slightly more public. For example, you can have a driver such as Misaki in the car. And initially, Misaki waits, so every evening he comes out of the theater, Misaki is waiting for him. They go to the garage, take the car, drive home. Initially, she's sitting on a bench, reading, waiting for him. And then, little by little, she's, she'll be found in the car. She's more a part of his life and a part of the car itself. The car is the place for self-reflection and the place also for imagination, right? To, to recreate what, what was or what might have been. And of course, as I said, the tape is connected to the idea of theater, to the idea of communication, to the idea of the dead, because the tape is essentially his wife's voice. And now we have enough time to listen to, to see the initial sequence. Of course, if you can lower the shades, otherwise we won't be able to see, especially the initial scene, which starts in the dark. And so, so this is the very beginning of the film. And as we've seen in other films, you have the character emerge. You just see the their living room in their apartment in Tokyo. There it is. And then you'll see the body of Otto emerge during their lovemaking because she's on top. And, and, and seamlessly, she goes from sex, from her orgasm, to storytelling, to the story of this young girl. But then the next day, he tells her back. So sex and storytelling, sex and... Storytelling, their relationship are closely tied, right? And keep in mind, they've given up on the idea of having another child after the death of their daughter, but storytelling has replaced their, the creative aspect of their relationship, right? They're not creating another human being, but they're creating stories, but those stories reflect both of their selves, okay? See? 